Genghis Khan was the founder and first Khan of the Mongol Empire. He was a fearsome warrior and leader with exceptional military skills and strategy that helped him set the foundation for one of the largest empires in human history. From 1206 to 1227, Genghis Khan transformed social and political life across the many continents he ruled. He was also known to be a prolific lover who frequently impregnated the women he came across as he rapidly expanded his empire across Eurasia. Scholars claim that he was responsible for impregnating more than 1,000 women during his reign. Nearly 900 years later, genetic experts estimate that everyone in 200 men alive today are his descendants. During the 13th century, the Mongols were polygamists, a person who has more than one partner at the same time, although the men were more so than women. This meant that Mongol men could have as many wives as they wanted. They could even buy wives, although not all of them were purchased. The women played various roles in Mongol society. Genghis Khan's first wife, Borte, was responsible for his heir production. Their fathers introduced the pair when Borte was 10 years old and Genghis 9. They were engaged, and their marriage was set to take place in the future. Genghis was known then as Temujin, and he lived with Borte's tribe until their marriage. Once they were married at the age of 17, Borte became the head of the first court of the Khan and the Grand Empress of the Mongol Empire. Shortly after, she was abducted by the Merkit Tribal Confederation for over eight months. This set Genghis on a rampage to rescue her alongside his close friend Jamuka, destroying anyone and anything in his path. This could even be seen as a precursor to his path to becoming a conqueror. When Genghis's first son was born, the question of his paternity naturally came up because the rival tribe had abducted Borte before he was born. Nonetheless, Genghis raised the child, Yochi Khan, as his own. Besides Yochi, Borte would birth him three other sons and five daughters. Genghis's sons had their own share of military achievements, but his daughters were equally important in solidifying Genghis Khan's growing empire through marriage. Khan would strategically marry them to trustworthy allies chosen to reign over neighboring kingdoms. This put his daughters in key diplomatic roles that played to his advantage. He took women as rewards for the territories he conquered. Although his first wife, Borte, was far from the only special woman in Genghis Khan's life, it was quite common for him to take wives from the tribes he conquered. He was offered Kulan Khatun as a gift after defeating her father, Dyer Usun's tribe, in battle. Genghis was immediately captivated by Kulan and positioned her as an empress. She was given an ordo, or court, of her own, and the Kenti Mountains as her territory. She was a great leader in her own right and managed the strategically placed land diligently. She also bore him a son named Galagian, whose status was second only to Borte's four sons. However, marriage was only temporary in Genghis Khan's life. One of his later wives married one of his generals, and another of his wives, Moga Khatun, even married his son, Ogadai Khan. Historian Jack Weatherford argues that Genghis Khan did not have more than four wives at any given time. However, there was confusion as his concubines were admittedly indistinguishable from his wives. The Mongols captured more land in 25 years than the Romans did in 400, and since women were gifts that Genghis received from conquering tribes, it is estimated that he fathered hundreds of children. Genghis alone wasn't responsible for spreading his genes. His sons also made significant contributions in this regard. Once they were of age, Genghis Khan's children, who fought alongside him, took on many wives of their own from conquered territories, just as their father did. Even though Jochi's paternity was in question, Genghis treated him like his biological son. Just like his father, Jochi continued the Mongol tradition of taking multiple wives and fathering many children. According to estimates, Jochi had, at least, 14 sons and two daughters. Three of Genghis Khan's sons from his first marriage to Borte, namely Ogade, Chagatai, and Tolui, were given parts of the Mongol Empire when Genghis passed away in 1227 CE. His third son, Ogade Khan, succeeded him to become the second great Khan of the Mongol Empire. During Genghis Khan's reign, his children were eager to spread Mongol influence and DNA. This eventually became a tradition that was carried on through the generations. Kublai Khan, the founder of the Yuan dynasty and grandson of Genghis Khan, 
followed in his grandfather's footsteps by fathering dozens of children. Like Genghis, he habitually collected wives and procreated with them. His wife, Chabi, gave birth to four sons. Famous Venetian explorer Marco Polo spent 17 years in Kublai's court and became one of his trusted diplomats. According to him, Kublai Khan had 18 additional sons besides the four from his marriage with Chabi. These were all children he had with his official wives, and they were legitimate heirs to him. At its peak, the Mongol Empire covered nearly 9 million square miles of territory, making it the world's largest contiguous land empire. By the mid-14th century, Khan's empire expanded into Asia and Eastern Europe. Much of this expansion was undertaken by his sons, and as they conquered people from different cultures and races, Mongol DNA spread far and wide. An untold number of children were born during the Mongol expansion as Khan continued his practice of conquering lands, looting them, and taking women as prizes. Nearly 0.5% of Earth's population possesses his genes. The Mongols capturing territories across Eurasia meant that Genghis Khan's family was spreading like wildfire. However, it is only with modern science that the true scale of the effect of his conquering on the human population was revealed. In 2003, biologists conducted research in which they collected blood samples from people residing in the areas that were formerly part of the Mongol Empire. Evolutionary geneticist Chris Tyler Smith discovered that nearly 8% of men across 16 populations in Asia shared nearly identical and anomalous Y chromosome sequences. This variation was traced back to a lineage that began in Mongolia roughly 1,000 years ago, and it was all but confirmed that it was no coincidence. It was the Khan gene. This genetic anomaly is present in nearly 0.5% of Earth's total population. Based on the world population back then, it was estimated that nearly 16 million men alive at the time could trace their descent back to Genghis Khan. However, these statistics are only applicable to men. Since the Y chromosome is a biological switch that transitions an embryo into a male child, it is only present in males. Therefore, geneticists detected the anomaly in male genes and can only test males for that unique strand of DNA. And women have no Y chromosome to study, it is challenging to establish just how many of them today are related to Genghis Khan with certainty. However, some women can trace their descent to Genghis Khan through male relatives and ancestors. This is the enduring legacy of a conqueror who lived nearly a thousand years ago but left a profound effect on the world that can still be felt today. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.